Hello, this is Professor Stephen Eshba, and I'm here to help you out a little bit with uh, using Spartan to uh, determine some aspects of the uh, intermolecular potentials. And uh, so what I've done here is I've set up two chlorine molecules, and uh, and uh, they're they're currently in ball and spoke, but I think that. Uh, for this purpose, it's going to be a little bit better to go into space filling uh, mode. And uh, well, one tool that I just want to alert you to is that you can tell the difference, the distance between these molecules by going to this distance icon, which you'll be able to go to if you don't want to make it a, a default icon like that. You can go to that geometry. But I'm going to go here. You click on one, you click on the other, and it reads out here that these are 33. 0.8 angstroms apart. So that's a, that's pretty handy. Now there's another handy icon here which is this energy minimizer which um, I'm going to just press it and uh, you notice that it's got a readout of zero here and what that means is that there's no interaction between these at all and uh, well that's fine. Um, on the other hand, uh, uh, what, what that probably means is that they're too far apart for them to see each other uh, so I'm going to do another uh, command. Now you probably know that just rotating, uh, all I do is 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 uh, use the mouse button for that. Um, on the other hand, if I say Control on the Mac, Control, and then scroll, that just rotates one of them, which is kind of nice. And the same way is if I press Command and move my mouse around, it moves the whole thing. But if I Hit, hit control command then I can move just one of them so that's the la that latter one is what I really want to do I'm gonna move by control command I'm gonna move them a little bit closer and then I'm gonna hit this energy minimizer to see if they start to see each other and the answer is no okay so I'm gonna move in a little bit closer and see if they start to see each other still zero move them in a little bit closer and still zero and I'm gonna maybe move this one now a little bit closer and uh, oh I think they just saw each other a little bit and I'm gonna move them in a little bit closer and there something really happened so if I do an undo which is command Z um, I just brought them into within range so now I'm gonna measure the distance between them and I see that it's about nine. So I conclude that the range of interactions between these two molecules is, is nine angstroms or less. Um, so that's good to know. And the other thing that's good to know, I'm gonna just hit this minimizer again, which is makes it obvious that these guys uh, have reoriented. So there's so there's uh, there's a there's a reorientation um, and that also has to do uh, with, with this intermolecular attraction. Finally, you notice that this number is now minus 4.6, and you know we can just round this up to the nearest kilojoule per mole. So minus five. What that means, of course, is that to pull these apart, um, it would take about 4.6 kilojoules to to pull them apart because they sort of fallen into a state in which the energy is minus 4.6. So getting from minus 4.6 back up to zero, that's the bond strength between, or the intermolecular bond strength between between those um, two, two molecules. So uh, that's one part of that. I also need to just uh, remind, uh, make sure I note that all this, these manipulations that we're talking about, you have to have this thing open. That is to say, if you're in that view, then those special translation uh, command keys don't work. So one other thing I just want to mention here, and it goes something like this. I'm going to just build a bunch of water molecules, and uh, and because maybe I'm interested in how water molecules interact. But now what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a cluster of them, and the reason for that is uh, that uh, I want to know how a whole bunch of them interact and I'm going to do that I just hit the molecular mechanics minimizer and here we are you can see that they're all interacting now it is handy sometimes to turn on the model uh, of hydrogen bonds so I'm going to do that and you can kind of see that there have been some hydrogen bonds uh, forming here and uh, so that's just handy to, to notice and um, 
and uh, that's so that's that and then sort of the last thing I, I, I want you to you know that be aware of is we can do the same thing you know if I imagine for example that this is liquid water and uh, so I'm just gonna let it all do that and I'm thinking maybe this molecule right here is at the surface of, of, of liquid uh, how much does it take, you know, for that molecule or this molecule to evaporate away from that? And uh, the, the name for that is called the enthalpy of vaporization. It's not a perfect measure, but it does kind of give us a sense of uh, uh, a sense of of the energy that's required to, for a water molecule to, to evaporate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this guy here, and then now I'm doing the control command to move it to the right. I can see I've broken those bonds. I'm going to move it way over here. Okay. And uh, and now I'm going to I'm going to look at the energy. So, here we're going to have to do a little bit of a calculation. Oops, looks like I needed to move it a little bit farther away. So, here we go. I'm moving it way over here. Um, so this energy that we're looking at here is the um, is the is the energy of that molecule connected to the surface? So I'm gonna if I would take that number here and subtract away the number when they're close together like that, and uh, that would give me some sense of uh, how much energy it takes to vaporize uh, that molecule. I, that is to say, take the difference between that and and this number now. Okay, I think that's it for now.